Welcome back, ZRK fans, to the October 2018 3v3 Spooktacular Tournament recap. I remain your host, Dominic. We're into the winner's finals. It's going to be Izzerai, Dying and Fireblock against Manu, Isaac, and 400 in what should be a best of three. And we will be going now. It's on Titan. Titan's a neat little map. It's one of those maps that you see sometimes, actually. I find it's one of the more common team maps I find, but I also don't cast a lot of team games, or play a lot of team games. So, who am I to talk? Still, reasonably popular map, fairly open. Works well for the way Zero K plays. Some choke points here and there, but overall open and a like, good mix of openness and choke points. Works nicely that way. So, Spiders are 400's choice. Mana going for air, no surprise there. And Isaac going for Cloakie over the north side of the map, kind of sneaky. Although, I don't know if they're going to have a choke point they're going to be holding on to, because there's a few that lead into their base. Fireplug, on the other hand, going for Rovers, which we haven't seen in a serious match yet. The dark side map notwithstanding. Ezerai going for Air, and Spiders are Dianfroin's choice. Which we haven't really seen a lot of Team Pluck recently. Yeah, Manu getting a nice little bit of scouting going on. Or sorry, not scouting, I'm not saying defense going on here, not scouting. Defending against what I believe was a... not a Blastwing, what was... Oh, must have been another Swift. So yeah, Izzerite has managed to see what's going on in the northeast with Isaac. I think 400 and Manu are still unknown yet. I don't think I don't think their position so forth has been revealed, but I don't know. No, they haven't. No, it's just the north side. Just Isaac. But it should be no time at all before Dying Friend finds out what's going on here. So it looks like we're going to be seeing a bit more of an economic strategy, according to the chat at least from Dying Friend. We're seeing a bit more of an economic strategy coming in from the western team. Although, yeah, no, it's defensive. Defensive, economic. Going for defense is very early on. But at the same time, Isaac going in with the Glaives, trying to raid a little bit. Fleas as well coming out from 400, also trying to raid. And it looks like some Swiss from Manu. More for defense so far, but they could just go in right now. And it looks like they will, in fact, go in to try to see what damage they can do. Finding some things. They may be able to harass, may be able to kill off a couple of these Swifts from their opponents. Establish air control. Or at the very least, scout out, see that their opponents have not built the north side of the map at all. Which, okay, I say that the western team looks like they're going for a bit more of an economic strategy, but at the same time, the fact that they haven't built up the north side of the map means we're not sure how much the western team is going to actually succeed in an economic strategy, especially seeing as they've just lost air control. Like, this swift over here, it's trying. It's really trying, but air control's lost. At this point, Manu can just go wherever the heck they want, but also, more importantly, there's nothing really holding this. Like, at this point, Isaac can just go along here, and nothing's going to stop them. And that's exactly what they're going to do, in fact. Just go along the north side of the map. Nothing can stop them. There's nothing built up there. So it's going to be a lot harder for the western team to defend their northern side than for the eastern team, because they have no factories there. Unlike Isaac, who does have a factory there. In their north side. Same time, Fireblock going in for a bit of a revenge assault here with the fencers. Should be able to get in a little bit, but they probably won't be able to get in farther than... Maybe attack the... Actually, you know what? No, there's nothing stopping them. That commander could go down. Yeah, there's nothing Isaac sending either. Isaac is trying to come back here a little bit. They will be spotted, though. The fleas are here. Should find out what's going on here. At the same time, they're... Okay, that's that's the cue. Fire... <laughs> Once you see that happening, he's right coming in with their swifts just to make sure that nothing has stopped the fencers. Get rid of those ravens. Get rid of those... Well, everything really. It's actually kind of surprising because, like I said, Manu had air control, but they turned that into ravens which means they turn that into potentially losing air control. It's kind of the risky thing with air control. If you lose, like the Swifts, you gain air control, and then you kind of spend air control on things like Ravens. Because, of course, Ravens can't hit air. But it doesn't even matter. The Glaive's coming back here. Isaac, able to survive, able to defend their teammate. Manu, their commander survives at very little cost themselves. At the same time, Dimefriend stopping a small assault on them as on top of that, but ultimately, that wasn't really as big of a threat. Still, though, with that happening, there's a lot more metal in Izzerite's base. Okay, good. 160-ish metal or so. But also, it's just that that did still lead to Firepluck managing to get into the center a bit more, I'd say more effectively than 400 has. 400 has the fleas there, but Firepluck's getting the expansions going, the defensers they can kind of push expansions with. Again, the problem is this north side has not been taken, which means... there's And the way it's been taken, it's still kind of a situation where I could see Isaac coming in. Especially on a fast expansion, and taking it out. 
But right now, we do have Fireplug with the with the fencers here to just defend, just to make sure that as the expansion happens, as Israide goes and builds that up, nothing's going to stop it, which is important. Especially considering that right now the Western team... Oh, I shouldn't say right now. The Western team had a stronger economy. The Reclaim is really helping that. And really, it's still a quite even economy, ultimately. Air control again, remaining contested. Fencers here should be able to help deal with that a little bit. Getting rid of one, maybe two Swifts? No, not even the one Swift. Just damaging the one Swift. Still not bad, though. Just soften it up for later on. Oh, and this assault over here by Firepluck. That's a little bit tricky. I don't see it doing a huge amount of damage. More just being a contain. By being a bit of a threat. Just saying, Isaac, hey, you know, just... Don't get cocky here. Don't start attacking. I can come back at you here. Oh, and at the same time, this south side of the map... I mean, 400 losing what base they had, but they should be able to defend this no problem. They have... Oh, actually, maybe not. The Venom could be the key. Pure Hermit from 400 against the Hermit Venom Red... Or Hermit Venom... Yeah, Redback coming in from... Uh, from Dianthroind. If the Venom manages to get rid of all of these Hermits, that's gonna be... Or even stun a few of them. That could be enough, but it's tricky. Obviously, they don't want to just walk in and risk it. Because if they lose the Redback, they lose the Venom... That's a huge amount lost. Are we getting to the radar? That is nice. What does that mean for radar coverage? Oops. Where are we? That means a lot, actually. Radar coverage is now completely gone in the south side of the map for the red team. For west team. Sorry, east team, rather. For east team. At the same time, Don for able to buy enough time to get the rest of their forces in here. That should be enough. That should be able to completely take this out. And 400 is trying their best to hold this off as well. Their commander up, trying to help defend, and... the. Oh, whoops. Not bad. Commander coming here. Dying friend also getting rid of everything on top. Well, I should try to get rid of everything. It's kind of hard to say. The Venoms did go down, though. One of, them, one of the Venoms dying in the well. The other one dying outside, but still. If, they don't, if the Venoms aren't there, then that Force Multiplier isn't there. That Force Multiplier isn't there. I mean, the Lotuses help, but that's about it. Still, Dianfern is reasonably secure, reasonably well secured this 3.2 metal extractor expansion. So, at the very least, that's something, but eh, it's still taking a lot to push off 400. Same time, over the side of the map, a bit more of an effort has been placed to actually getting Firepluck into Isaac's base. Or maybe not Isaac's base, just getting Firepluck to threaten everyone. Possibly going to, no, going to Manu's base. Going for revenge, trying to get rid of the commander once and for all. I actually can see this working. There aren't a lot of ravens to deal with this. There's only three in plan. I think one of them is actually... Yeah, one of them belongs to Iz Izzeride. And two of them are under construction. So these fencers could do some damage. Looks like they're more just trying to find the position they can actually attack from, though. Not, not necessarily dedicating themselves to a particular attack angle yet. Working well as a contained force... I mean, at this point, Western team has turned that into a bit of an economic advantage. They're still managing to take the north side with a lot of reclaim, too. Looks like we missed a few defense forces coming in, or assault forces coming in to try to deal with this stuff. Why does he keep saying zero on reclaim? What the heck? Okay, that's better. 500 metal on reclaim. That's good to have. Western team actually does kind of need that. Looks like they're, in terms of static, static economy, a little bit behind. I'm a little surprised Dianfern hasn't built up this metal extractor. They've held, they've held onto the territory long enough. They could have really profited from that. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. But at the same time, we do have Ezeride managing to take the air control again. Or at least trying to. It's a little bit tricky, but it looks like that will be fine. Fireplug also with the chainsaw just to secure that air control right in the front. Oh, actually, no. This chainsaw is amazingly placed. If you look where the chainsaw is placed, it is, like, right here, actually. Basically covers the entire center of the map. There's almost nowhere that Manu can go without going hard north or hard south in order to avoid the chainsaw in the first place. Unfortunately, it's not really being constructed right now as Fireplug can't... Can Fireplug just not reach that? No, they're good. Okay, they can reach it. Wasn't really sure there for a second, because it looked like they just had no range in the build because they dug themselves in too deep. But now, still though, Isaac not letting that potential assault force go in without without any contest. I just don't see it this working out. The two Phoenix is coming in here on top of the Ravens. Ravens will get rid of this knight if the Scorchers don't. And the Scorchers will. Now the Ravens instead going in for the top side. Getting rid of Isaac's commander. That means this entire plateau is basically open. 
And on top of that, these fencers completely securing the center as well. So once the chainsaw is done being built, that will be it for air control in the center of the map for Manu Isaac and 400. He's right also with Proxy Spider Factory. There we go. That's what they need to help defend the north side of the map. Perfect. So, yeah, Western team can definitely go for their economy here. They are still, however, behind. Just a little bit by metal per second. Like, it's just they haven't developed as much of their economy. A lot of it being the overdrive here, though. As we can see, the eastern team, they have a bunch of solar plants all along the eastern side of the map. We don't see a similar construction along the western side of the map for the western team. And that is holding them back a little bit. They're getting a lot from the reclaim, though. But that reclaim has just run out. So at this point, they kind of... Actually, no, the reclaim hasn't run out. What am I saying? Some of the map is full of reclaim. They can get all the reclaim in the world. And this caretaker is right in the way, too. So actually, the caretaker can get quite a lot of reclaim just in its own range. So now there's, there's a reasonably good position to be built from here for western team. But again, Easter team with that overdrive, and if Western team went for that as well, they would be, they'd be easily winning this. I mean, not, they're not losing. They're just kind of at a bit of a stalemate. Although I do like this forward position here from Fireblock. Defensors are going to have a hard time though. The Halberds will be able to get in and get close, or no, they won't. Getting distracted by the Hermits. Nicely done. Nice little bait play there coming in from, well, I mean, entirely from the Western team. Good teamwork on their part, really. Getting rid of a couple halberds for very little cost. Flea's coming in here, but... No, going down too quickly to the fencers. Fencers way too effective at dealing with that. Manu's commander... A little bit too far away for the fencers to really get rid of. But once enough to get, once enough to get in place, the stinger's gonna go down. Pretty much everything else is gonna go down. Unfortunately, no bait plays right now. These halberds can get in here and can get rid of the fencers. And Fireblock knows it. Leading them to retreat. Wisely, I might add. Yeah, the Halberds, if they try to attack now, they are going to get torn apart by the Stingers. So this is still working out all right. Although, of course, if the Stingers attack first and need to reload, then that will be a problem. But now the Halberds not even going for it. And I can't blame them. Don't go for it. That's an unwise move. Again, that's a bait. To get the Fencers to attack them. And at the same time, okay, so we do have... We do have Dimefront having built up this expansion, this Metal Extractor. And terraforming out a wall to make sure the crab can't get rid of it. Nicely done. It's kind of this weird... Like, it's this, this is very, very forward, but like I said, they've defended it. Diamond's done a good job making sure they can hold on. It's kind of funny just how precarious that position is. Although I suppose the same can kind of be said for Isaac. Mostly just that this north set of defenses hasn't been contested yet. I mean, all these redbacks, they could go over to the north side of the map and wipe out this entire range of defenses. It just hasn't been done. Much more focused on getting rid of the Razor, and much more focused on getting rid of the Conjurer. And I I say I agree. I mean, the north side, it's kind of nice to get rid of it. They can get rid of the Metal Extractor, and they're going for it now. If they can get the Metal Extractor out of Isaac's possession, that will help. But it's not huge. As it stands, though, the Western team has managed to get their, their infrastructure up for the Overdrive, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. As we can see, they've, they've been in triple-digit metal for a long time. Eastern team only managing to get up there thanks to Reclaim. And Western Team, on the other hand, a little bit of reclaim puts them over the edge. And even then, they're always at an advantage. If they just, could you just get rid of this metal extractor right here? Just just clear that up. No? No, okay. Okay, that's fine. I mean, might as well let Isaac use it. It's it's being a good sport, you know? Let, letting Isaac have that metal extractor as you wipe out most of their defenses in their base. And essentially their entire front line. I mean, overall here... Yeah, this team is doing really well. Service... Okay, the Cerberus. What is the attack range on that again? Ooh, nice. Yeah, I should be able to get rid of most of this here, but it's kind of... It's a bit of an odd position because this firebase is not poorly positioned to hold the center, but it isn't the best position to actually get rid of their opponent's base from a safe position. And that, I think, is going to become a problem over time because if this gets surrounded and wiped out or anything, any major force comes in here, even just this, this lance, potentially... That could end up destroying the entire firebase, and there's not a whole lot of value it's managed to get other than making air control a little bit easier, but even then only in the middle of the range, only in the middle of the of the field of the map. Not overall. At the same time, we have this giant army being built up by 400 that's going to go for a flank. We have the fact that Isaac is also going for a flank. Like, this pushing by Fireplug, it's doing an okay job, but it's just not forward enough to really do the best job it possibly could. Going again for Manus Commander, and this is not going to work. Manus Commander too well defended. Again, Firepluck losing quite a few forces, trying to get rid of that. Okay, second time they didn't lose the forces. 
But this third time, they most certainly did. And that seems to be something the Fireblock focuses far too much on, I've noticed. They just try to get rid of that commander, and it's not really helping. And the fleas are doing an okay job here, but that's... he's right. And again, though, there's that flank coming in there from Isaac as well. He's right. Their commander basically on their own with a couple of lotuses, which the Ronin will be able to get through. I mean, Israel's commander, it looks like there's waiting to die. It's making a last stand. At this point, that shouldn't be a last stand territory. Like, dying friends wiping out the south side of the map, getting rid of, of 400's commander. Getting rid of everything 400's built up here. But the north side of the map, I mean, Israel getting saved last second by themselves. By their own air force. The original factory they built this map. Or this match. So. There you go. That actually did manage to pay off. But at the same time. Firepluck. Center of the base. Taking a lot of damage. The Halberts. Ah, damn it. I missed that. Halberts coming in here. Wiping out the center of the base. Cerberus. Cerberus is still being built up though. And as Firepluck's commander died in the process. I feel like it has. Nope. Just retreated. Got out of there alive. The fire base is still up. But at the same time. A lot of damage is being dealt by Isaac, and they've pulled forward quite a bit. They've really taken the north side. Again, this is the thing I was worried about before, is the fact that most of Israelite's forces... I mean, most of the western team's forces in general are on the south side of the map, whereas the eastern team is spread evenly across the north-south of the map. Which means that, yeah, Fireplot could push in because there's a lot more concentrated power in the south and could get this firebase here, but it also means that the eastern team can flank it out and destroy it, which is exactly what Israelite's doing. Like, providing pressure on all sides when the main assets are right here in the center. Oh, yeah, and the Cerberus doesn't have the power. Really? It doesn't... Oh, you got to be kidding me. All right, there we go. Get that last solar collector up, because honestly, that is absolute crap. Also, maybe fix the priorities, because it looks like something at high priority is being built up instead. So, yeah, that that should be built up. Like, if that, if that power plant gets built up, it's it'll be fine. The Cerberus can fire. I mean, again, it's still not quite long enough range that can actually get rid of the base, but it's still good. He still controls the center, helps control the center as well. Which is exactly what's trying to be done. And there it is! There's the Cerberus! Getting those shots off. Again, going for Manu's commander for reasons I'm really... Okay, at this point, I guess reclaim, kind of, maybe, but I'm really not sure what the reasons are. And there's the Lance coming in to get rid of the Cerberus. A Lance and Halberd. The Halberd, actually, I don't think it's in range. Yeah, it's a bit too high up, but that... That Lance... Ah, the Lance goes down to the Cerberus. The Revenge is had, and Man of the Twelve's Commander does go down. And if these Quills go down as well, to, probably to the Cerberus, that will be enough to actually stop the Reclaim entirely, but no, it doesn't look like they're being gone for. In fact, does Firepluck even have radar... No, they have... Oh, no. They have radar coverage. What am I saying? Okay, never mind. No, they've they got total radar coverage. I don't know what's going on there. But still, the Western team does have a massive economic advantage here. And nicely done, Israelite managing to break through this Western side, while at the same time, Diamond sorry, the Northern side, holding back Isaac, getting rid of some of these defenses. While at the same time, on the Southern side, Diamond slowly pushing in, getting quite a bit of reclaim at the same time, as they take basically everything they took from 400, just turn it into metal for their own army. At the same time, though, Firepluck getting completely overrun. Halberd's able to get rid of basically everything but the Cerberus. And the Cerberus can't really deal with them. It's trying to, for sure, but it just can't. And at this point, it has no repairs, so anything coming in to try to deal with it, it's just going to be able to get rid of it sooner or later. And there's the piling gone. There's the Cerberus depowered. And that's all those Halberds really needed to do. At this point, the Glaives look like they're going to be coming in here. Yeah, getting rid of the, Halber uh, the Cerberus. Although... Ah, there we go. Yep. Okay, get rid of the Caretaker. Nicely done. Get rid of the Caretaker. Get the Fleas up here. Get rid of the Cerberus. So yeah, that's Fireplug's Firebase completely destroyed. And that's where the Flanks come in. But even then, that entire time, Western Team had a massive economic advantage. They turn into a couple things that are dead now, but there's still the fact that Dying Front has a massive army on the south side of the map that's able to get rid of all these Fleas. Basically, the south side's Dying Fronts. The north side... Israelite's managing to hold on to reasonably well. It's a bit of an even fight. Fireplug's in a bit of an iffy position, but they had enough there that they should be able to hold out long enough. The only thing I can think of maybe that could be a problem is if Fireplug ends up massively losing morale and resigning. So, not really sure how that's going to go. 
What I do see happening is that Fireblock... I don't know. I could see them resigning, honestly. They're, it's a bit of a reputation of theirs, but I could see it happening. They did lose their main force. Like, this entire firebase, that was their main asset. They're trying to hold on to that. Get it at the servers. Get it at the chainsaw. Make sure they had full air control. Now they've lost both of that. Manu is now starting to get their air force out in the wild because they can. The chainsaw is gone. And while Isaac and Fireblock are doing a reasonably good job... Sorry, Isaac and Fireblock fighting and Israel and Fireblock are doing a reasonably good job maintaining the north side of the map. It's really kind of up to Diamfriend right now. And Diamfriend, they could push a lot more aggressively than they are. Like, Fireblock did say everyone's over in the center. An, an attack to the south would do a lot of damage. Like, if that gets rid of 400's base... And really, why is Diamfriend not going for this? This is painful for how much Diamfriend isn't taking advantage of the position they have. They have such a great position to play from. And... Now they're going for it, but even then, it's a little bit late. They've lost a lot of the advantage they would have had if they attacked sooner. And, what, do they have radar over this? No, they don't. They have no idea. Why isn't there radar here? Like, there aren't even welders or anything. Or there's one weaver, rather, not welder. One weaver. I was like, if that radar was here, they would have seen. There's nothing here. They just walked, waltzed right in there. Could have, like, two hours ago. Sorry, two minutes ago. Not hours. Feels like with the frame rate sometimes. So, two minutes ago. They could have gone in, but at this point, I don't see it happening. I mean, Dimefrain trying to now play defense, helping out Fireplug, but Fireplug kind of maybe... I think Fireplug overextended, and Manu and Isaac were able to sweep back in. 400 lost a lot of stuff, and Manu and Isaac seem to be just taking care of it. On top of the reclaim, as Fireplug's pointed out. Now, granted, Western team still has a 50 metal per second advantage, and even with the Eastern team's reclaim, it's even. Like, the economy is not uneven. The Western team even has an attrition advantage. Like, this is actually still in their favor. They're still winning by the numbers. And even by territory, it's at best a, a stalemate. Although, dying for losing their commander is not good. But, yeah, that's the thing. Western team is actually doing fine. I think Fireplug might just be, like, their, their morale is down. Which is huge. It actually is really important. But, otherwise, no. It's, the economy is not too bad. The overall game is not too bad. Like, yes, they lost an advantage they had. Fireplug lost a firebase that was hugely advantageous and made it much harder for Mano Isaac and 400 to actually attack. And now Dime has lost a bit forward of position. So, yeah, that's actually... It is kind of falling apart for them, for the Western team. But by the numbers, if they hold on, they should be able to get at least something in here. If they win a, a fight or two, they would be able to push this back. I just don't know if that's going to happen. Wait, does Isaac have three Clokibot factories? Yes, they do. I don't know why. For some reason, they decided redundant factories was the way to go. Maybe the things were taking too long to get off the platform compared to how quickly they were building. I don't know. That's novel. People don't usually do that. Well, at any rate, that is still... I don't, I don't think Isaac... Oh, Isaac is a bit newer. Not that new. No, they're not, not new at all. What am I saying? They're no newer than Manu. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I feel like a lot of this game is coming down to the fact that Fireblock is losing a lot of morale. Because like I said, Ezra and Dimefriend are doing fine. Dimefriend, even though they lost a fair bit of their asset, like, a fair bit of their, their army, they're still doing okay. Economically, the Western team is still massively ahead. They're still leagues ahead, so I don't know what the concern is. Ezra, the one I'd say, is taking the most advantage of that. And actually, this force here should be able to wipe out a lot of what Isaac has. Without the Fireplug Scorchers, that could still be the thing they need. Now, send the Scorchers in, get rid of a bunch of the stuff here, maybe waltz right into Isaac's base, start wiping out some of the factories. On top of all the Rexes coming in here, this is still a strong assault on the north side of the map. I mean, yeah, some damage being dealt on the south side of the map, and Dimefriend's having a hard time holding on to it. But if Dimefriend can hold on to it as, as this assault goes in the north, it could be enough. Although, again, the Recklesses are kind of timid. I mean, that's the only thing I'm noticing that this match is that there's a lot of timidity on both sides. And, really, the Western team is at such an advantage, they can push. Oh, yeah, and chat point, finds to point out that this Geo has been unclaimed this entire time. Yes, it has. That would be kind of nice for, for the Eastern team. But even with that, it wouldn't be a huge difference maker. Like, at this point, the main difference is that the Eastern team is going for a bit of a better army composition and is just... Going for a nice positioning. Like, they're they're approaching things the way they should. And the Eastern team, even though they have an advantage... Sorry, the Western team, even though they have an advantage, is not taking advantage of that advantage. 
Right, their economic advantage is not translating into a military advantage. It's actually translating into effect. Say their their attrition is higher too. Their army size should be higher. And they have air like I don't know what Fireplugs is complaining about. But again, it's Fireplugs, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But there's an air force. They can bomb out the maces and penetrators, or bases and lances. Those can be wiped out completely. I don't know why this is a concern. The air control is kind of even. I mean, really, no one has air control right now. No one's contested air control. But at the same time, no one's really going to get rid of the maces and lances. Now, part of it is that Izzeride is focused heavily on taking out the north side of the map, like taking out Isaac. Which makes sense, but still... Like... At this point, getting a few air force air units here, taking out the maces and lances, that would just bring back center control. But at this point, Eastern team is turning that center control into an economy, into more of an army. They're closing the attrition gap rapidly. Yeah, I just... I don't know. Wait, what is Fireplug going at? Oh! That explains where all the money's been going. I can't believe I didn't even notice that. I mean, I didn't expect someone to be building... Dimefern to be building a detriment over in the southwest side of the map. Like, that... That's not gonna work. So, I mean, okay, actually, with more caretakers, it might work. Pistol, 24,000 metal. 24,000 metal! Like I said, if that metal was invested into bombers, that would have been... Like, honestly, I think that Vireblock's right. That detriment is the detriment of the team. Like, that was the reason they lost right now, is because a lot of money was... But I don't know why... Like, I said, this doesn't really make sense. Like, this... This game was West, West Team's game to lose. And they lost it largely because... Well, okay, partly because they got flanked. Mainly because they got flanked, actually. It was a really nice play from Isaac and 400 to deal with that. But also just because of timidity. Like, Dying Front could have attacked a lot more often. Dimefrin could have attacked more. Fireplug could have attacked more. I just don't think they realized that they had such a massive economic advantage for the majority of the game. Like, that had 50 metal per second advantage for almost the entire game. And that never came to fruition. Partly because most of it was going to the detriment, sure. But even taking the detriment out of it, just the fact that there wasn't as much of an army, there wasn't as much of an assault force. Like, the fact is, when you have that much of an economic advantage over your opponent, you can afford suicide missions. You can afford to just attack all out, get a bunch of damage in, and now your opponent has less of an economy to work with and less territory because you've damaged it. And then you just keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting until finally you win because your economic advantage is so high that even if you lose things, even if your units die, you're still going to be able to rebuild them faster than your opponents can. So you're still going to maintain an army advantage even if your attrition is terrible. And if your attrition is good, great, but there's no reason to be timid. Not when you have that much money at your disposal, or that much metal at your disposal. So the Western team, they went for the economic strategy, they got a massive economy. It worked for a while, it just didn't really turn into anything. At this point, time for an... Now, at this point, this is a Hail Mary pass, this detriment. It's the only thing they really have, and there's not really enough metal going into it to make it worthwhile. As it is, it's only 45 metal per second being poured into the detriment. I kind of feel like it needs to be more... Oh, wait. Oh, Strider Hubs are only 10 now. My bad, I didn't realize they got nerfed. Sorry, it's 40 metal per second being poured into this detriment. Yeah, it's nowhere near done. How much How much has been paid for yet? Okay, there's another uh, 7,000 metal left. Yeah, that's not being done before the game's over. Like, if there was a massive focus on that detriment, maybe. When you have that much of a metal advantage, maybe. But, no. And like I said, that metal advantage should just be all out aggression. Yeah, the money, just push it. So, yeah, that, that to me is the big thing. Ah, I'm losing an advanced geo plan. Not good either. Still, yeah, at this point, Eastern team... Like, Eastern team is doing exactly what the Western team should have been doing. They have the economic advantage. They're going in for the kill, just attacking relentlessly. And yeah, they're losing units, but rebuilding them is not going to be a problem at all. Especially with a proxy tank factory. Rebuilding them and getting them in position quickly is not going to be a problem for anybody. So yeah, at this point, I just don't see it. There it is. There's the bush. Although I, I do agree that the detriment was not the way to go. Especially now that it's like effectively 
three times metal for the Eastern team because the Western team is pouring 40 metal per second into a detriment. That's not going to work. Uh, yeah, that was that was very interesting. Very educational, I think. Very much a show of what happens when you both get a little cocky about how you're set up. But also, what happens when you don't use the money you have to be aggressive and make sure your opponents can't really destroy what you have? Because like, this choke point, if Israel had taken this choke point 15 minutes ago, the firebase would probably still be there. And Mando's commander could have been killed earlier by the fencers. It wouldn't, the fencers might have died, but they could have been replaced. Although, actually, no, 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 never mind. No, 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 no. If the fencers died, that would have been bad. That would have led to the base being destroyed. So, forget that. The fencers would have, they should have stayed alive. That was good. But still, just more units. More stuff. I don't even know when this detriment started building, but judging by the timing, it probably built around the time the firebase was getting attacked. And, yeah, it's not really accomplishing much. That's all the metal in the entire team going to that detriment. Or, well, most of it. Not all of it, but yeah, it's... Is detriment thinking... Is, the, is Diamond thinking the detriment's gonna win? Because no, it's not gonna win. It's not gonna take the match. Yeah, so what we really have are stats. Okay, so metal used was pretty much the same. I mean, like I said, the Western team had an advantage the entire time. I mean, mostly an advantage. Actually, this is not indicative of that. Oh, right, yeah, because it's all overdrive. That's why. Yeah, the base metal income, yes. But overdrive, yeah, definitely. No, 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 that's the metal income they had. Yeah, it's pretty indicative. The army value was definitely higher for the Western team for most of the game. Up until the point that the firebase is destroyed, basically. Defense value was... Oh, no, no, this is the firebase destruction. Right here is the firebase destruction. And then it was soon afterwards that... Then there was the giant assault by the halberds. And maces that wiped out most of the army. But again, it's like that... Still a really good position to work from. And like I said, Western Team had an attrition advantage as well. So in every way, Western Team had an advantage. That... They had everything going their way. It was just that they didn't use it. So yeah, that was that. And I think if I'm looking at it right, looking at the brackets right, that was the only match played. I guess after that point, Firepluck just went nope and resigned. So yeah, that was also the only game in the winner's finals. Which means that... That leaves... Oh yeah, and the loser's finals... Okay, so that was the only game in the winners' finals, and the losers' finals, they still left. So Firepluck, I think that team just resigned outright. So Catastrophe Top Tax Sigaro ended up moving on to the grand finals. So now we can watch that match between Foreigner Man and Isaac and Catastrophe Top Tax Sigaro, the grand finals. That'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. Short break. Then those matches. And then that was that would have been the tournament. So be back with the grand finals in a couple minutes.